To illustrate the ongoing problems with bail reform, law enforcement officials point to the case of Mark Dennis in Keene. Police say in November he was out on personal recognizance bail from a prior arrest when he stabbed a man. Even though he was charged with second-degree assault and felon in possession of a deadly weapon and had clearly violated his original bail conditions, under the new law, he was once again released. People just seem to be revolving right in and out. Uh, Bedford chief talked about cases where people assaulted police officers and they're uh, released on PR bail before they even the officer can change their uniform from the one that got ruined in the fight. In Concord Tuesday, police and prosecutors detailed several instances of potentially dangerous offenders being arrested and turnstiled in and out of jail. To fix the problem, the New Hampshire Association of Chiefs of Police is backing a bipartisan bill to reshape bail reform, in part by returning the evidentiary standard for holding an offender back to where it was before the law changed six months ago. We don't want to undermine, you know, the bail reform, but we want to fix the problems. Supporters of the bill claim it would leave intact the original intent of bail reform, which was to ensure that low-income defendants don't get stuck in jail just because they don't have enough money to get out. But the author of the new law disagrees. Unfortunately, SB 91 is a gross overreaction to a problem that may or may not exist. Senate Majority Leader Dan Feltis has his own bill to do some cleanup of the new bail reform statute, but he says the law isn't the problem. It's not the legislature's fault if prosecutors don't argue their case. It's not the legislature's fault if some judges misinterpret. In Concord, Adam Saxton, WMUR News 9.